Uvalde Radio.net, your concert station. Some uh, music out of Castroville, Texas. The one and only Mr. Weston Rips uh, from the Stars. One of my very favorite songs, man. And uh, just it's really kind of a fitting number uh, in light of recent uh, events here in Uvalde. So uh, excited to see him live tonight. Graf 7A Ranch Steak Night over in Hondo, Texas. With me on the phone, Mr. Weston Rips. Welcome back. Hey, Mr. Miguel. Hey, man. How you doing, bro? Thank you, sir. <laughs> doing well. Doing well. So again, man, thank you for writing that song. I know that that when we play that song uh, here with the tragedy recently here in Uvalde, I know that song just means so much to people here in town uh, specifically. So, go and give us a quick rundown about you know the inspiration of that song before we uh, uh, before we get on to the the meat of the interview. Well, yeah, it's, it's uh, tried to tell the short version. I I actually had a brief writing songs for uh, for uh, some TV and film stuff that I was doing, and. Uh, it was, uh, they needed something, a positive take on, on losing somebody, and it kind of just got me in that zone of thinking. And uh, I started writing the song and had, had a good chorus idea and then kind of forgot about it and revisited it. Um, my grandma passed away a couple years ago and kind of gave me those verses I always needed. So uh, just um, kind of put two and two together, and voila, here it is, you know. You've already heard me gush about how beautiful the song is, and I just love everything from the arrangement to your voice to, I mean, just the bells. It's just a, a fantastic piece. So thank you again uh, for creating that and uh, sharing it with our listeners. Weston, you're going to be at uh, Graf 7A Ranch Steak Night tonight, 7 to 10 p.m. Rumor is full band show. Is that is that what's happening? Yes, sir. It's a full band. I mean, we're a three-piece jam band, but that's, that's as full band as you need to do it, so... We we have a good time and jam out. I've got some. I've got a great rhythm section, and we we uh, we get people moving on the dance floor. Oh yeah. Well, before I talk about your newest releases and what else is going on, let's talk about the band. Who are the guys in the band, and where did you wrangle them up from? That's uh, so. My drummer was a drummer that I looked up to as a pretty much as a kid when I was in middle school. He drummed in high school and and uh, went off and graduated when I went to high school. So we never got to drum together. But we ended up uh, meeting up here. As, as we as we aged, uh, I happened to see him playing at church and asked him if he'd be interested in playing some shows with me, and now we do it all the time. Um, his name's Jacob Biediger, uh from Castroville, Texas. And then uh, I've got a couple bass players. My main bass player right now is uh, Brian Gallegos from Divine, Texas. And Brian is a fantastic musician. Uh, he actually, uh, his main instrument is accordion. And uh, so we're working nice. on busting the accordion out on a couple songs right now in our set. But um, it's a uh, good group of guys, and we have a great time. So now I've seen you play a few times, you know, solo acoustic. Do you remain on more of an acoustic thing, or do you switch over to electric? Uh, what, what What is your role in the band of three? Yeah, so I'm the I'm the lead singer, and I, I kind of do a hybrid, and I kind of take pride in it because it's kind of my sound from everybody else's sound. But I play... Uh, Arch top hollow body with a P90, and uh, I also have uh, my my bandmates think I'm crazy because I plug in two. I have two cables hanging from my guitar because I use the uh, acoustic uh, pickup as well. Wow! So I kind of get a blend of acoustic electric at the same time, and it kind of has this chimey. Uh, I do a lot of picking, so it it, it kind of uh, it's interesting, but it works. You know, it's kind of a cool little blend. Yeah, if you're going to do a lot of picking, to kind of fill up that sound, so it doesn't. Since you don't have a real oh, yeah. guitarist, yeah. Well, you are definitely an innovator, and uh, you know, let's go ahead, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about that, man. I mean, you've got you, your home studio there in Casterville. Uh, you've been recording artists, you know, and that we've even played here on UvaldeRadio.net. Besides yourself, let's go ahead and get caught up, man. So, um, what has been coming out of the studio as of late, and what you've been working on? So, I just produced. Uh, I just had three singles that I produced that just came out this summer. One of them. Uh, was a young man. He uh, graduated from Medina Valley here, and his, he kind of had a song uh, going back to those times, so he thought it would be appropriate to work together. Uh, his name is Boone Holding. His artist name is Who's Boone, and uh, he has a song called Cornfield High that he just recently released. Um, and I helped, uh, I did the arrangement and produced the song for him. And then uh, after that, I had Garrett Talamantes come back, and we did a summertime song. He had this cool... Uh, I don't know, I was feeling an Eagles vibe from it, and that's what he was kind of going for as well. And we, uh, he came in and we, we tracked his, his stuff, and I kind of did the same thing with the arrangement. And um, guitar solos, I had a lot of fun on it, you know. And uh, it's Garrett's uh, second, his sophomore release single. And he's just such a great, great guy. I mean, a talented young man. He just, I think he's 16 years old now. Yeah. Um, definitely has a bright future ahead of him. 
And uh, then there's a there's a there's a uh, southern rock group out of Bandera that I I just did a, a song for those guys. I didn't play as many instruments or anything, but I produced and recorded them. Uh, their name is Blackwater Holler. They had a song called "Cocaine Go Away." Pretty much a positive out outlook on on uh, his experiences but it was, ended up being a good song so staying busy at the studio man and uh, what about you and oh, yeah uh, you still working on stuff in your own uh your own uh I, namesake i am just mastering my next release so it'll be out probably within the next two months now, in the past, you put out some records. You, you've you done full releases. Uh, I think your last full length was at 2020. Um, and you even put out, like, you know, a vinyl pressing and all that. The last couple, of, from what I understand, have been kind of like single releases. Uh, any plans to put out an EP or full length LP? What's How, how are we going to package these songs as they uh, as they grow I, in number? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, the way things, the way people do things these days has really changed. Uh, mm-hmm. It seems to be a very good marketing uh, trick to release singles and singles and compile uh, compile a uh, an album or an EP later on and throw most of those songs and package them together. And uh, you know, do of course release a song or two as you release the album. And I think uh, that's the plan right now. I got caught up in other people's projects and and kind of took away from myself. So I was planning on releasing it this year, but. It might the full length album might be pushed back to you know next year sometime. Now we've talked about your past. You know you started out in rock music and you, you've you've done kind of the Americana thing, a little Texas country thing. You're kind of a a one stop shopper, multi genre. You know <laughs> in Casterville. <laughs> um, but um, now you've got that added insight of working with more outside artists. How has working with different people and I guess um, I guess complementing their work or their writing style, um, their musicianship. How is that affecting your songwriting or maybe even your recording process is that something uh yeah no, no, that's a great question i think uh if anything it really builds confidence i mean any anything i do outside of the box it makes me more confident inside the box so and it's starting to make me feel like i know who i am all around so when you know as a producer i think i'm going to have my a certain sound or a certain yeah. take on things no matter what instrument i'm going to play or no matter what song it is or the artist uh, there's going to be a a Western Rips flavor that's going to sneak its way in there, obviously. And I think I'm starting to know what that is instead of seeing it when I'm all finished. You know, I have a better vision, I guess you can say, than, than I used to. And I can approach it more confidently. But even in my own work as well. Because I'll get some songs from like, okay, is this going a rock direction, a country, or somewhere in between? I think I'm definitely that somewhere in between. I'm never that extreme rock, and I'm not extreme country. So it's Americana at best, I guess, you know. I think it's um, something to say, at least, at least back in, in the in the heyday, oftentimes when you're shopping at the record store, you're looking at, at the, the back cover of an album, you find out who produced it, you know, who engineered it. And that a lot of times had some influence as to, you know, who you bought a record from, whether it was made by Bob Rock or Bruce Fairbairn or, you know what I mean? These, uh, yeah, these, Rick Rubin. Yeah, yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, that's a thing. I mean, how cool would it be for you to be the Southwest Texas, you know, guy, you know, the... Yeah, that would, that, that would be something. You never know. That tastemaker of sorts, I guess. So, man, very cool. Well, it, it's really cool to see you so busy. Let's go ahead and, just go ahead and shift into, like, uh, personal life. I know you're a you're a family man. Any cool, remarkable stuff going on? I know you're heavily involved in baseball with the kids. Uh, just give us a give us a quick look at uh, how, how family life is treating you. Oh, man, you just opened a can of worms there, Robert. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just, um, yeah, I coach my, my oldest. I have three boys. Uh ages four, five, and eight. I just switched my oldest son's baseball, Pinto baseball. We went undefeated, which pushed me into the uh, all-star coaching zone wow. for the first time. And that was an experience. Um, I can't really say if it was good or bad, <laughs> um, but it was something. <laughs> so um, it, it's all, it, was, it was good, a good experience for my son, for myself. And uh, to really think twice about coaching all stars in the in the future, but you know, you get into the homes, the small town politics going. It, it gets kind of uh, crazy and fun and everything at the same time, pretty much. I can so. only imagine, man. Yeah, it's like it's like you level up, and then there's a whole new like level of madness and like backstabbing, and you know, under the table. Oh, and- oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on to top it off, it's kind of like running a very small business for a very short period of time. You have to have everything well-organized, prepared, planned out, 
It's Thank like, you. you know, so it really had to take away from me at the moment. So I was working on other projects and, and baseball, and that was it. So I didn't really spend too much time on my, my own projects. And I had to cancel and delay gigs and put off stuff. I know that there was something you called me about I couldn't do because of it. Oh, no worries, so, man. Hey, man, those kids are only kids once. So, you know, God bless you. And oh, yeah. He was a father. Oh, yeah. But uh, congratulations on on you and the team for making it that far. That's that's really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the gig tonight again. Steak night, Graf Seven A Ranch over in Hondo, Texas. Ken and Lori Graf, just great hosts. Um, so, uh, if if you don't mind, uh, tell the listeners how the steak night works. Yeah, you know, we br- you bring the meat right, and they got it fired up. Yes, yeah, you bring your own steaks. I think they do a very low cover charge. It used to be three dollars. I'm sure it's probably the same, three or five, something around there. And um, you bring your own steak, and uh, the graphs, like you said, Ken and Lori are just great people. And uh, if you need help grilling them, I'm sure they will will be there, or they'll have someone there to help grill. Um, and if you don't have, you can show up. I know that they sell, uh, I think they sell sausage that they'll they'll throw on the grill, and they mm-hmm. sell um, salads and fries and all, and all sorts of other stuff. And, of course, they have tons of beer. So uh, <laughs> That's right. It's a great, it's a big old nice new dance barn and it's it's a great time i'm gonna vouch for them they've got the coldest beer in like you know central south central texas man always just oh, yeah. ice cold beer when i go there uh and just uh wonderful people so definitely go support steak night tonight uh, what seven to ten is that the right time yeah steak night is six to ten but okay. we play seven to ten playing seven to ten out there with the western ribs band and uh, i guess what else is coming up man any um any uh, high profile shows you want to uh, get out there? Uh, have you have you gigged with anybody recently that you want to kind of uh, recap for us? There's not no high. Pro- I had to pass on some high profiles, but um, because of baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, um, no, nothing, nothing too exciting. Other than the songs I'm working on, you know, check out Garrett's tune. It's very, it's a real cool song. And uh, like I said, I've got a, I've got a new song in the works that'll be out probably six to eight weeks. All right, we're looking forward to hearing that. For now, let's go ahead and get your latest track that we got on the air. Uh, it's called These Eyes. I know we've already talked about it before, but go ahead and give us another quick little rundown on uh, what this song, These Eyes, is about, the inspiration, and uh, we'll get it on the air. Yeah, so These Eyes started, um, actually, when we had the winter snow back uh, back here in South Texas, when it snowed like crazy over yeah. Valentine's, uh-huh. Valentine's weekend, and um, the power being off and, you know, having not much to do other than make sure that everybody's warm and, and has food and water and all that stuff. And then downtime led to guitar and songwriting and, and uh, kind of inspired a song, even though the song's not about that, it just inspired it, you know, just your standard love song. It was, it was Valentine's day. So it was on the, on the, on my mind. And that's where it came from. Well, it sounds great on the radio, man. And we cannot wait to see you do it live tonight. Graf 7A Ranch, Hondo, Texas, steak night. So bring the meat and bring the appetite and a little bit of beer money. And go watch Weston Rips and his band rip it up. Ha, no pun intended. <laughs> tonight from <laughs> 7 to 10 in Hondo. graf 7 aranchcom for more information about the event. And Weston, where do we find you online? WestonRips.com. And you can search me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, pretty much anywhere. WestonRips.com. Here it is, These Eyes. And this is UvaldiRadio.net. Thank you, sir. God bless you, man. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot, Robert. Y'all take care. It's a lazy weekend day. Spin out on the sofa and doing all the things. I just can't get enough of It's a one day I look forward to and I'm missing you like crazy. Here we are, you wondering how I feel about you. Look into these eyes when you're asking if I still love you. And think about my life or revolve it all around you. I don't need to see what I'd be without you in my life. I don't need to say. With candlelight and nothing else on but you and I. What does it take? Everything to be gone so we can be close. And here we are, you wondering how I feel 
Looking back at you. I'm looking. 